So, Nick DeFries is out. Daniel Ricciardo is back in. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Yes, the news you've probably all heard by now is that Nick DeFries has been sacked from Formula 1 with immediate effect by a helmet Barco and Daniel Ricciardo is back in again. Yes, very strange indeed, but this also gives me indication about Yuki Tsunoda. It's obvious Yuki is in that team because he's he's different. I'd like to use the word diverse, but I'm not going to because I hate that word, but yes, he is different. He's a Japanese driver and he seems very popular, but of course, he's not exactly the best driver in the world and he's made quite a few mistakes. He has pulled it up a lot recently, but in the past he's made a lot of mistakes. And let's face it, he's never going to be a great, he's never going to be challenging Max Verstappen for wins in five years' time, is he? So there is one reason why Yuki Tsunoda is still in the team and Nick De Vries is out. And it looks like that will be out of F1 for good because when you're actually sacked by F1 in that sort of situation, uh, you very rarely come back. Of course, Daniel Ricciardo wasn't really sort of sacked with immediate effect. He was just let go. I mean, it's the same thing really, but it makes a world of difference in the course of you actually coming back into F1 in the future. And I do believe for Nick De Vries, it is game over, unfortunately. It is game over. Let's go now to... Uh, this uh, report about it, I think uh, there's been a lot of uh, sort of speculation still go ongoing at the moment, but I'm going to go with the uh, Express because that seems to have the uh, the story running. So we'll go with it. Nick De Vries is sacked with immediate effect as ruthless helmet Marco swings the axe. Nick De Vries has been sacked by Alpha Tori after just 10 races with the Red Bull sister team. Nick De Vries has been relieved of his driving duties by Alfa Tori after just 10 races with the Red Bulls as the team it has been confirmed. The Dutchman only joined Alfa Tori at the end of last year following Pierre Gasly's move to Alpine but has already been given the boot by Red Bull advisor Helmut Marko and replaced by Daniel Ricciardo. De Vries struggled to impress over the course of this year despite turning plenty of heads with his point scoring performance for Williams at Monza last year when he stepped in for Alex Albon while the Thai driver was undergoing treatment for appendicitis. It has been a different story for the 28 year old in recent months though and it already seems as though his time in the F1 paddock is over. He has been ditched by Alfa Tori of immediate effect with Marco having lost patience after just 10 races on the team's books. They have confirmed that Ricardo will be drafted into replace De Vries from next weekend's Hungarian Grand Prix until at least the end of the year. A statement on Tuesday said, following a strong performance in today's tyre test at Silverstone, Daniel Ricardo will be driving for Scuderia Alfa Tori with immediate effect, joining the Scuderia on loan from Oracle Red Bull Racing. Daniel will line up in Budapest for the first race. The popular Aussie was dropped by McLaren one year ahead of schedule in December after struggling to impress alongside Lando Norris, although he has quickly snapped up by Red Bull as their test and reserve driver. He has been taking part in plenty of PR and simulator work for the team in recent months. Now, this I don't agree with. Red Bull seem to have their sort of uh, Daniel Ricciardo uh, uh, goggles on. They're not thinking very clearly about this. Clearly they're looking back at the past success of Daniel Ricciardo and thinking that that can be replicated in the future. Well, I'm sorry, but Daniel Ricciardo is well past his best, well past his best, and he's not going to suddenly jump into a Red Bull, replace Sergio Perez and start being a number two to Max Verstappen. That, I'm afraid, if that's what Helmut Marco is thinking, is in a pretty delusional state because that is not going to happen whatsoever. And how is Daniel Ricciardo going to do at Alfa Tori? Well, my prediction is he's going to do pretty badly. Of course, for the first four races, nothing will be said because it'll be the same old story with Daniel Ricciardo. Oh, he's just getting used to the car. Just getting used to the car. And then for the next four races, it'll just be, oh, well, yeah, he's, he's almost there now. You know, he'll almost be there. And then the Last few rounds of the championship, nothing will happen for Daniel Ricciardo. And then they'll decide at the end, 
possibly to let him go again because I just cannot see unless he super impresses at Alpha Tori and comes out of the gate so strong that it's an unbelievable performance, sort of the same kind of performance as the Lando Norris at Silverstone, which is very difficult to believe in an Alpha Tori, to be honest, because they've come absolutely nowhere this year, absolutely nowhere. I can't see him continuing into Alpha Tori next year or even into a Red Bull. But that, that Red Bull dream just seems like an impossible reality to me. It really does. I can't ever see Daniel Ricciardo getting into that Red Bull seat. I really can't. He did well at Red Bull because he was in the best car. He wasn't the best driver though, but he was in the best car. So that always makes up for any shortcomings. But as soon as he started leaving Red Bull and moving to other teams, his real performance level started to shine through. And that performance level was not that great. So I just don't see what this move is going to make any advantage to Alfa Tori whatsoever. Now don't forget, of course, they're changing their name next year as well. Still no comment on what it's going to be, whether they're going to go back to the legendary Toro Rosso name or they're going to call themselves something else. I don't know. Red Bull B team? Whatever. But yeah, so there's going to be some changes at Alpha Tori anyway. And I think this is just a test for Daniel Ricciardo to see if he's still got it uh, before they, you know, do their plans for next year. Well, I say it's going to be a, a name change for the team once again. And I think they need a bit more than a name change. I think they need a bit of a personnel change. You know, the... the uh, the team manager or whatever you want to call him these days, he's, I never see him on the TV. I mean, you see all the others all the time, Christian Horners and the Totos and all that lot, but you never see anything from Alpha Toy. I never even see any coverage from Alpha Toy, to be honest. Never even see them cars out on track, to be honest, either. So, yeah, they need some kind of PR push as well to really sort of get them back up again. Because a few years ago, they were doing pretty decent. But these last couple of years, they've really tailed off the pace. And they're just, they're just not doing anything. And to bring in, you know, Daniel Ricciardo as the great white knight to save Alpha Tori is a big mistake. And it's not going to happen. It really isn't. I just can't see it. Anyway, let's look at the Daniel Ricciardo story as we now flick over to Sky Sports. Daniel Ricciardo will return to the F1 grid following his departure from McLaren at the end of the 2022 season. Nick De Vries' debut F1 campaign is finished after just 10 races. The 34-year-old Australian has been loaned out by Red Bull, for whom he was serving as a third driver, to their junior team for the remainder of his one-year contract. Having waited a long time for an opportunity in F1, former Mercedes reserve driver De Vries has been dropped after just 10 races into his rookie F1 season. I'm very pleased to welcome Daniel back into the team, AlphaTauri team principal Franz Tost said. There's no doubt about his driving skills and he already knows many of us so his in integration will be easy and straightforward. The team will also profit a lot from his experience as he's an eight times Formula One Grand Prix winner. Yeah, you're, you're sort of really banking on that as well to sort of carry you forward, aren't you, Alpha Tori and Mr. Franz Tost? But as I say, I mean, look, just underneath it, we got the video of Daniel Ricciardo when he dived into the pool there. At, uh, was that Monaco, I do believe? You see, that they're, they're trying to replicate past glories. They need they need a foil to get up there with Max Verstappen, but this this is not the answer. Of course, they're in a very difficult position at Red Bull because they got Max Verstappen. Who can they have as a good number two? This was a, a real problem during the Michael Schumacher era, trying to find a good number two. I think they found it eventually with Rubens Barrichello, it has to be said. He certainly knew how to toe the line, how to sort of let Michael go with it, and it it really didn't cause too many problems. There was a few times when Rubens Barrichello got fed up and he did, you know, try to champion his cause as well. But overall, I think he was a great sort of number two driver to Michael Schumacher. But trying to find someone like that in this day and age to sort of be anywhere near Max, or, I mean, obviously he's not going to be near Max, but, you know, to finish in second or third place in that sister car, because don't forget, it's exactly the same car. It's just the fact that Max is driving it on one end of the garage and uh, Sergio Perez is driving it on the other. But the car is pretty much the same. So it's going to be very difficult to find someone as a, a, as a sort of match or a semi-match to Max Verstappen at the moment. But definitely Daniel Ricciardo, he's not, he's not the man for the job. I'm sorry, he's just not the man for the job. 
I mean, if you get released from your contract because you're not doing very well, that's a good indication that you're not suddenly going to turn that around and start improving to such a degree that you're going to get put into like the Red Bull main team as a number two driver. But it also sort of says about how much the uh, Red Bull young driver program is failing. It really is failing. They've got Yuki in there. As, as I said earlier, you know, he's he's a good lad, but he's certainly not the best. But really, there should be some real up-and-coming great rookies in there right now, and there isn't. And they, they seem very reluctant to put anyone in. There's, there's a lot of names being banged around about who should be, you know, in that seat. And a lot of them don't even include Daniel Ricciardo, to be honest. But... They seem very reluctant to put anyone in that second sort of Alpha Tori seat and indeed the second Red Bull seat. So the actual Red Bull program, the you know, young driver, whatever you want to call it, Academy program, is certainly looking a little bit on shaky foundations right now because they should have at least, I don't know, four or five hot shot drivers waiting in the wings to take those seats. And don't forget it's four it's four seats at Red Bull, not just two. It's four seats up for grabs. And they should have a, a pool of about four or five drivers waiting and ready to go in case something like this happens. Because don't forget, I mean, F1 is a very safe sport these days. But it is possible for one of the drivers to get injured enough to be out for a season. So there should be someone there. There should be a hot shoe ready willing and waiting to go in that car at the slightest opportunity. Daniel Ricciardo is not that hot shoe. He's, you know, he's third driver and testing at Red Bull. He's certainly not, you know, waiting and champing at the bit to get into, I mean, obviously he is, yeah, to get in Alfa Tori, but he's not a driver that I would consider a hot shoe by any stretch of the imagination and waiting to get into that car. So, it's yeah, it's very, very... Very, very strange decision, I have to say, from Helmut Marco, to be honest. I mean, you know, he's the boss. He knows what he's doing. But in this situation, I don't think... I, I think he's he's got the blinkers on and he's not looking at the big picture. He's not looking. He needs to get a hot shot in that Alpha Tori for the rest of this season. And then hopefully they could possibly transfer because the rumours are that Checo's going at the end of the year. At the moment, with his form, I have to say, it's, it's probably going to be true. Uh... So, yeah, they need someone to do that so they can then transfer. Otherwise, they're going to end up in a Daniel Kvyat situation, which was got to the point of being a bit laughable, to be honest. When uh, Daniel Kvyat, you know, in the in the Toro Rosso, promoted to the Red Bull, and then he's, he was demoted back to Toro Rosso. And then didn't he get promoted back to Red Bull? I can't remember. His, his story was quite bizarre in the end. Yes, but that, you know, they don't want to end up in a Daniel Kvyat situation at Red Bull. Um, especially as they are so, so stable as a team at the moment, they're you know they're up there at the front. They don't want all this going on behind the scenes because even with their sister team, you know this all affects the main team as well. These little decisions that have to be made just takes their eye off the ball with the main campaign. So yeah, they want to really sort this out. And unfortunately, I'm sorry all you Daniel Ricciardo fans out there, but I just don't think he is the man for the job. But anyway. That's it. He is going to be the man for the job for the next 10 races. Let me know in the comments, how do you think Daniel Ricciardo is going to do for these final races? Now, do you think he's going to be um, a bit like me playing in league races and like desperation is going to sneak in? He's going to try lunges and dive bombs just to try and gain positions. Do you think he's going to take a measured approach to his possibly last ever 10 races in Formula 1? Or, I don't know, or do you think he's actually going to come out of the gate really, really well and just really pull that Alpha Tori, like, you know, a Damon Hill back in 1997 at Hungary with that Arrows car? Do you think that's even possible for him to be able to do that? Especially considering that, you know, he's he, he's not a young man anymore, but he's not that old either. He's 34, so he's not well past it. But in terms of Formula 1 driving... I just don't think these days he's he's got it as he used to have. I just really can't. As I say, I I never thought of him as a great driver anyway. He he was at the time in the best car out there, and that you know that made him a good driver. But as soon as he moved teams, uh, his real performance started to shine through, and it was 
it wasn't it wasn't that good. And of course, Daniel Ricciardo moved teams too many times. I've said this before. So many times he moved teams. It was ridiculous. It really was. He should have he should have just stuck it out because some of his team moves were very ill advised as well. And I think when he moved from one team to another, that team actually started doing a lot better the next year not because he'd left because you know their natural performance started to get better and that was that was a that was a wrong move for Daniel Ricardo so yeah anyway so there you go Nick de Vries is out Daniel Ricardo is in what do you think about it let me know in the comments thanks so much for watching everyone you have been awesome as always and I'll catch you in the next video